So without further ado, here is Professor Ricardo Diaz with his presentation on industry misconceptions about ethoxylated materials. Thank you so much, Ricardo. Okay, uh, good afternoon to all of you. I am happy to be here because this is one of my best topics, the one that I like the most because it's the one that I rant the most. So those of you who haven't seen me before, I should tell you that I have 130 slides to go in 30 minutes, which means I go to the speed of light. So I suggest that, uh, yeah, as I always said, take a deep breath. You know, and we're ready to go. Okay, so the first thing I need to tell you is that this is on my own. <laughs> this is, I'm not representing anybody other than myself and echo well. So I hope nobody from the university is listening to this because, you know, I may get fired, as I said. So let's start right now. So. I uh, you know if those young people in the audience may be surprised if I tell you that the modern cosmetic industry that started in the 20s, and when I joined the industry uh, five, almost five years, well, five years, five decades ago, was basically, and still, thank God, some industries are chemical industries selling cosmetics. It may surprise you, but that's what it was, as the paint industry sell paints. And you know, when you are uh, operating under the rules of chemistry, and Tuan Lavoisier, the father of chemistry, made clear, well, you just cannot say what you want. You need to prove what you say. So basically, there is no freedom of speech in, in science, and, and, and specifically in chemistry, where you need to, it's very easy to experiment and prove your point. But let's see what happens. Now, uh, this is the stuff that comes out of the real cosmetic industry after six decades of cosmetic science progress. You have fantastic shampoos for the lucky you that have hair. Uh, look how beautiful the hair look, and also your hair is stronger. This, believe it or not, is not a cream or a lotion. This is a shower gel that has the ability to make your skin look longer. Uh, look younger. Eh? It's fantastic. You can buy it at the supermarket. It doesn't cost that much, $5. And uh, this is a skincare product, the proof is on the pudding. There you are, the black and white. It takes about 28 days to get this sort of miracle in your face. Now, this is coming from the greatest laboratories of the greatest companies. It's Procter & Gamble, Unilever, etc. So the question is, how do you compete with this? These people has on the research centers, hundreds of scientists working on this and highly paid. So how do you compete with this? Well, you compete with this like this. I mean, here is uh, Sephora that uh, sells stuff uh, that says that it's clean and planet positive, whatever the hell it is. So I have ask you one question. Behind Sephora is Louis Vuitton. So why are they selling cosmetics? Well, I'll tell you what, they're selling cosmetics because they don't care about what they sell. They sell shoes and bags, and they, for them, cosmetics is just another thing to sell. It doesn't matter if the cosmetics are good, but are irrelevant. If they are safe or unsafe, it's just a way of making money because it's basically a, a marketing company that is tries to sell you some sort of luxurious product. But they really don't care, just really don't care. In reality, all the stuff that you have here is what I call what comes in the market from the alternative industry. This is not the cosmetic industry that I am familiar with. It's not the chemical industry that sells cosmetics. This is just the stuff. People sell cosmetics as they could be selling shoes or cars or cell phones. It doesn't make any difference. So they need to come with all this concept in order of appearance from 19 uh, until now. Uh, I was talking to a very young, smart journalist uh, yesterday and the, uh, asked me, what is clean beauty? Well, clean beauty is basically the improved version of natural beauty because natural beauty has been around for some time. Everybody claims natural is becoming rancid. So you need to come with another marketing. Uh, can I say crap? Yeah, I just say crap. Okay, good. So what they have in common is that all these concepts are here to save us the same world, you know, like, I mean, a guy like me has been working on the industry forever. My purpose was just to poison you and destroy the environment. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. That's why I wake up in the middle of the night. Oh, my God. But they're here to save all of us from destruction. And uh, the other thing they do, uh oh, I miss one. <laughs> Let me go back. Ah, here it is. This is not true petroleum. It's nothing from petroleum. So I have the opportunity right now to tell you. Uh, that in case you wonder, the amount of uh, petroleum used by the cosmetic industry is not even one day of the whole year of production. So I don't want you to believe that the reason why you're soaking petroleum is just to make shower gels. But these people need to have a story to tell, and they then let you believe that you are a natural product. There's going to be no more global warming <laughs> if you are that dumb. Okay, so the, the other common thing is that there is no to the word ether which is the purpose of this talk. 
So just read this. You can read. And that is the problem. That's the problem with this clean concept because they made people like me and many others that had dedicated their life to the progress of cosmetic science to look like dirty people. As always said, yes, we made mistakes. In fact, I wanna to talk to you about one of the mistakes we made, but that doesn't mean that these other people is coming here to save the world. They are here to make money. It doesn't matter what they are gonna sell you. So to me, this is the response of the mediocrity. There is no doubts about it. You cannot compete with the real science, with the real scientists who just come up with this thing. That's, that's all there is. Now, ha, you don't have this over here. It's this and the next one. I just found the, they put this money. So this is a shampoo that is sold at Sephora. It costs a bundle, $40, $50, you know, this expensive stuff. This is here at the top, a desert derived formula. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, you, 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 people believe that stuff. And uh, well, it says here, case <laughs> hydrates. There's no evidence at all that this product hydrates the skin or hydrates your hair. This is just the marketing stuff that we are getting accustomed from these brands and no respect to the truth. And now, <laughs> you're gonna love this. To call this product something good for the environment, where well, you have 450 million ingredients, much of which are absolutely irrelevant and unnecessary, when 40 to 50% of the key ingredients, which are the surfactants, are made from petrochemicals, and there's nothing wrong with it, we hardly use anything, and two of them are made from methylene oxide. But I'll tell you what is happening, because Whoever is there at Sephora decided the has absolutely no idea. It's probably a marketing person. They really don't care. And they think that they use this a bunch of idiots, but I am not. So I get annoyed when I see this being presented as the savior of the universe and a person like me destroying the universe. These people is just absolutely dishonest. I can I tell you one thing. None of the stuff I told you before, natural chikata will assist if we were controlled by something called the Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act. And because we don't have it, we have this, this crap on the market. That's the reason. Ah, I don't know. If I'm getting too high, I'm getting too, too excited. You know, don't worry. Okay, so, and moments will play. Uh, you know, in Canada, we have two languages. So I need to do a, a bit of French. Are these products bad? Well, the answer is all depends what is the content of this chemical, which is the other point of this talk. So <laughs> I just, my body and my lovers here is gonna describe to all of us three bad words. Okay, you know, anything with the word S today in the cosmetic industry from clean beauty, natural products or faith free with the bad is bad. And the word S shows up on Laureth or PG, the derivative of that. So that's the bad word. You can have anything in your components, in your uh, ingredients that says that. Now, the, the ether comes from using ethylene oxide as a raw material to make, uh, to make many things, including the cosmetic industry, we use it. And what well, you can see where the, the ether comes from ethylene oxide. And um, it happens that anything that has been made in surfactants or emulsifiers using anything from ethylene oxide is fantastic in performance. This, the best ones, that's why you see them all over the place because they are the most effective of all of them. Now, unfortunately, every time you have ethylene oxide, you could have one for dioxin, it's at the bottom. And you can see their link, their link. So, and, and I tell you, this one for dioxin is, is not something that you want to have at all. Now, therefore, all the products that are made from ethylene oxide with the word ether or PG are the potential of containing one for dioxin. Now, how bad is this chemical? And what is behind the no ether thing? Okay, now, it all started with this spill. And I like to tell the story because it happens that I was there when the spill happened. This is a spill unrelated to the cosmetic industry. It had to do with an industrial use of one for dioxin that somehow was being contained and it was not that contained that well because it leaked into the water uh, of uh, uh, the water source of, of this uh, place in Michigan. And uh, it doesn't look any good. You, the last thing you wanna do is to have one for dioxin in the water you drink. And uh, the reply when they were um, you know, approached by the EPA or the FDA or whoever it was, EPA and it was, they said, well, why are you looking at us? It happens that there are consumer products and specifically they mentioned the G and J, well, you have the two products that they mentioned. So what about them? What about them? They also want for, want for dioxin. Why are you looking at us? And uh, so this is the spill of uh, a long time ago, 40 years ago, give or take, where they linked together cosmetics and one for dioxin. That's the link started at that time. 
So what was the reaction of the industry? What I know, what, what was the reaction? Because I was there. I was working on the supplier side. We were the key supplier for Johnson & Johnson. So our surfactant had one for dioxin. We need to do something to take that out of it. So the first thing we did was to quantify the problem. How much one for dioxin is there? And number two is uh, develop the technology to get it away. And now I said, hey, yeah, in case you wonder what this is, this is what it is. This is a piece of cake because it means taking one for dioxin from this side of materials is very easy. But this one over there is, is tough beans. It's very difficult. And uh, it needs money. Here, you can make products with very little, uh, one for dioxin, less than one part per million. <laughs> With no effort, this is another story. This costs money because money is, is, is an expensive thing. So you tell a story. So you bought this fancy car, and now you have no money, and you need to keep it. And you say, "Well, what do I want to put this car? Where do I want to park the car?" I said, "Well, I can put it up there. I need to pay for parking." But I had on the other side of the street is for free. I, I, okay, I have no money. I'm going to put it on the other side of the street. So you keep it there, and nothing happens. One day, another day, another day, and one day, you come and there is no car. Because you see what happens is that in the year 2000, and we're talking 15 years after the problem happened, after having the car parked there on the street where you're not supposed to park the car, the presence of one for dioxin, it became more common. And the cosmetic industry that has decided, well, nothing's gonna happen. I can park my car over there. Nothing's gonna happen. So you know, the other, other people took care of the conversation and <laughs> you, know, you know who they are. So they said, okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah, I'm quite familiar with these two. And uh, in the year 2007, this is uh, uh, women's shampoo and, and body wash. And, and um, women, um, women, we're okay. The men are okay. It's just only the babies. <laughs> and the babies and the men. And the women, well, I'm fine. So those numbers, by the way, are correct. So they're showing you the content of dioxin of a good number of products, including baby shampoos. So the question is always the same. Is, is that number bad? Now, the problem is that they immediately expanded this to any other thing. Remember, they started with body washes and shower gels and uh, baby shampoos that they expanded to anything. So anything with those words now fits exactly in the same basket. That's it. Anything with the word ether, whether it's on the right or whether it's on the left. And as soon as a person with the knowledge that I claim I have sees this, he says, these people don't know what they're talking about because this, this is just two completely different things and related to each other. The fact that the word ether is present in both doesn't mean that two products have to be taken the same way. Now, this is so clear. Anybody that knows anything about what is going on that you read this statement and you need to say, these people is just, are they for real or are they just crazy? What it means, what it means is that they have a program that goes through all these products. God knows what garbage goes in, garbage goes out. And they said they, they have gone through 24,000 products. You have assessed the safety of 74,000 products. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Procter has two, 300 people working on the safety of their products and they make like 200. But these people, a couple of guys with a computer program, do all that. So, you know, they're competing with McDonald's. The question is, who sells more, hamburgers, McDonald's, or we, a safety assessment? How can anybody has any trust on an assessment that has been done 74,000 products? Oh, my God. Now, the question is, how bad is this chemical? We'll go back into it. So, well, it all depends how you look. Okay, so... These people operate on the basis of alternative facts and, and, <laughs> and dramatic effects. So first of all, what they do is to look at this thing as an industrial solvent. Like if you're handling this 100% to remove pain in your house instead of parts per million, and they forgot this guy. This guy is the toxicologist in chief. I don't know where he got his degree, but he forgot. <laughs> this thing from Paracelsus forgot. It was the Middle Ages. Probably he doesn't go back to those days. And uh, so the second thing is that well, 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 I have news for you. They just invent the stuff as, as they wish. So the first thing they do is to make this statement, but you can read that. Uh, this, uh, you know, everybody was dead there. And, and in, in animals, it's two references. The problem is that when you look into those two, I am looking at the time because I have a feeling I, I didn't really to cut myself at 2.50. Two, at two, uh, anyway, so all right, they quote this thing, huh? So I go and I look, you know, after all, I don't believe anything they said. 
So, so they pull a, a document from the FDA for site managers that they are cleaning one for dioxin from whatever garbage somebody has dumped there. What has to do with a cosmetic product? What has to do with a cosmetic product? And look at this solvent. They said that it created parts per billion in this study. Well, let's see what the study says. As the study, context is an industrial solvent. So, okay, that's what the paper says. That's what the paper says, massive doses, 1%. So this is the result. So you see, here they have rats and they feed them water and dioxin, and you have here a certain percentage, which is uh, zero, zero. Nothing happens to them. The number of rats that are dying for natural causes is about the same. Only when the content was 1% in the water, you can see now that the rats are dying faster, but there is certain levels that are, 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 are safe. And then here is the fine tuning. So we know exactly what is the percentage that was fed in the waters. But they say parts per billion. Are these idiots to know the difference between percentage and parts per billion? What, what is I think even high school, elementary school, percentage and parts per billion is the same? Well, I guess. And then they tell you that this product, where you're putting on your skin, taking a shower, is going to penetrate readily through your skin. Oh, yeah, it's going to kill you. Penetrates readily. Penetrates readily. But that's not what the FDA says. It says can penetrate, but they don't care. They just lie. It says the FDA says that. And you know, it's can penetrate the product evaporates. Oh my God. See, did you see how they lie? Now, is this ignorance or is malice? I'm more to the second than the first. There's more. Ay, ay, ay. has also stated that whatever evaporates is going to go into the shower, you're going to breathe it and you're going to die. Inhalation. The studies. More studies. And that's the level that is considered safe based on studies. And here, hello, God save the queen. Oh, Canada. The best study I have ever seen on the dangers of one for the ocean in cosmetic products has been done here where we live. Ha, our taxes at work. We pay a hell of a lot of taxes, I tell you that. And this is how they estimated what is the danger level of one for dioxin in a cosmetic product, in a consumer product, through inhalation or dermal. And the conclusion for the paper is that when you see a number like that, it means safe, because those are the levels of um, security that they use, safety, excuse me, that they use. So you can read the paper, it's there, and it will tell you, you shouldn't worry about it. Oh, and by the way, on the study, let me go back, they use like a homongous amount of, I don't want to screw up, here, they use 0.075% of, of, of dioxin, which is much, much more than what you actually have on the product. So that's what it is. That's what it is. Dramatic effects. Okay, so recent, this is the amount of uh, one for dioxin that you have in products. You, you see the products there. And that's the actual result based on the quality of the analysis that we have today. I mean, it, it reads basically one decimal. You go above one decimal, it becomes very difficult to calculate the amount. So, you know, it's, it's very a small amount. But for dramatic effects, they report the results in parts per billion. Well, I tell you one thing, all these decimals here are irrelevant. And by adding zeros, you made the people believe that the analytical test had the capability to analyze in parts per billion, and that is a lie because these people are here to lie to you and to scare to you and force you to buy whatever they claim is safe. This, 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 this is just, this is the problem. The regular person doesn't know. But you get a, a guy like me that has been around and I know what is going on and I can't, it takes me one second to know what happened. You know, somebody tells me that in the middle of winter, the, the weather in Canada is 25 Celsius. I won't believe it. Even though today is the middle of winter, we're at 17. That's why I'm wearing a summer dress. But <laughs> generally speaking, you know, it is also an industry of them. I guess that's my wife is going to die. I'm going to be a widow because that's my wife walking around the bathroom. Everything is smooth. We're going to die. And uh, so since I just told you all the bad guys that are providing and giving all this misinformation around, so what happened with the industry? What had the industry has done? Okay. The IFSCC is the international body of the Society of Cosmetic Chemists. 
It happens that the board has two members for several years now, as the companies, the, the, the company, the person disappeared, another person from the same company goes in, and one belongs to producer of raw materials and the other belongs to a marketer of consumer products, and both of them are on the sulfate free, and let's just, uh, you know, whatever we can say bad about the ethers, so you're expecting the IFSCC is going to say something to prevent this misinformation, I am useful for you. I am useful for you because there is somebody inside that is not interested on that. And what about this? Now, this is going to happen, or happen is going to happen right now. It's called Clean Beauty. Now, this is the New York SEC. So these three persons, you can Google them. They have no knowledge of, of toxicology. These are marketers, and they're talking about Clean Beauty as marketers. And, and I mean, the president is, is an outsider. He just recently came to the cosmetic industry. Now, what knowledge do they have about synthesis, analysis, toxicology? I don't know. I don't see in their credentials, but they just talk. And that's the worst part, when you use misinformation as a marketing tool. That's, the, that's within the industry. Watch it. As a supplier. They admit that it started as a blog on the internet, which was probably saying lies. Uh oh, what happened? I don't know what happened. I have to go back. I touched. Uh oh, oh here <laughs> I, I pressed one too many. So now those of you that are there, look at the word consumer perception. So what they're saying is we have misfed all this misinformation to the consumers. Now they believe it, and the perception is not a perception anymore, it's true. None of these statements is true. It's a perception by the consumer because they have been fed all this garbage information and they believe it. So they are using misinformation. They transform the misinformation in a perception. Oh, now, geez, now that I think I have hair, I can no alternative but to wait, waste every morning. <laughs> I need to, I spend 15 minutes every morning combing my hair because I have the perception that I have hair. Well, okay, so. That's the story. And finally, thank God, thank God, thank God somebody did something. I'm completely in favor of this uh, regulation because it's controlling the content of one for dioxin that we can have in products. I am 100% behind, behind this regulation. Now, this is the limit because this is the problem with anything with the word ether. And don't forget, one for dioxin is the only negative thing that you can put behind anything that has the ether word the presence of one for dioxin. Now, remember what I told you, the question is how much is on the product and how dangerous is this product? Now you look right now, this kind of an oddity in risk of products that are the ones that you have in your body for a few moments is very low. The ones that you put on the skin is much higher. And you may say, how can that be? How can that be? Well, I tell you what the reason for that is. Remember this? This is something that uh, the experts don't know. First of all, they treat it as an industrial solvent, but this is not an industrial solvent. This is a byproduct in a consumer product. Now, the studies that have been done for, for is very complicated. I, I mean, some of these are 80 pages, 80 pages of studies concluded that you can have a 10 parts per million or one for dioxin and it's safe. I'd rather have zero, but the fact that I have this there, it doesn't mean we're gonna do any damage. But the question is, this is 10 parts per million, and then the regulation is different. Why is different? There is a bat, and this is what the bat is. This is the real problem. The problem is that one for dioxin ends on the water that we drink because it rinses off from the body. The other does not. And you see, that's the problem. There is one for dioxin in water, in the water that we drink. I mean, the study is from the US, and uh, there's no doubt about it. Now you'll be thinking, okay, okay, one for the oxygen from the cosmetic industry, and we but wait, wait, don't get that yet, right? I'm not there yet. So anything there with a dot means the content of one for the oxygen is above the recommended limit. Now remember, the recommended limit from the EPA to give you cancer is based on one chance in a hundred thousand or a million. I don't forgot, if you were to be drinking water of your life above that level, it doesn't mean you're gonna get cancer. The chances is one in a hundred thousand, one in a million. I, I, I don't recall at this moment. So let's let's put the thing in perspective. Now, these are the sources of one for dioxin. That's the problem. That is not just the cosmetic industry. It's everything. It's everything. 
So it's an industrial solvent. It has been used for a long time. And, and the problem is that it, some, this people is exclusively focusing, oh, joy, joy, here, is focusing only on the cosmetic products. No, by the way, I don't know why a deodorant is going to bring one for the ocean into the water we drink unless you take the deodorant and put it on the garbage. But anyway, put it on the toilet. But anyway, so you see there is many other chemicals that are responsible for one for the oxygen. I did one day an estimate, my calculations could be off, and I calculated, estimated that the amount of one for the oxygen that comes from cosmetic products is barely one quarter of all the one for the oxygen on the water. So you try to solve the problem focusing on, on a shower gel when the problem is coming from the industrial usage, you're not solving the problem. Now, that is, as I said, that's why it's set at one part per million because you, the, the, that's what it gives you the, the problem is if you drink it. I don't think we have that problem in Canada, in Toronto, because the water, it comes from the lake. The lake is big, you know. So whatever, one for dioxin is on, uh, is it's diluted to nothing. And this is why there is a difference. The regulation, it makes sense. You put the emphasis where the problem is and you don't put the emphasis where there is no problem. There is absolutely no problem on a skin products. Now remember that I told you before we had the technology to develop uh, the stuff from I'm talking about 30 years ago we knew how to do it. Now let's start with this. Today we can make uh, emulsifiers, the famous ethoxylated emulsifiers, to make creams and lotions with less than one part per million because that's the detecting the, 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 ah, the limit of detection. Sometimes you even have less but that's where we put the specification. So I'm going to ask you a question of math. So assume that we now make a cream, a lotion, and uh, we're going to use 3% of ethoxylated emulsifier, which is the standard amount to make an emulsion. And the question is, for every one gram, normally you put on the skin, it's only a few grams. But a few grams, that's all there is. How much of one for dioxin will be on your skin? If per gram of, of product that you put on your skin. It's a, I guess anybody gets the calculator, but I just told you, it's less than one part per million and you only use 3%. You should do the math. And the answer is none of the above because the number is even smaller than that. You need to add another zero. So this regulation has no impact at all because the product, right? Well, I say you buy it from somebody who knows how to make the ethoxylated emulsifiers. It's absolutely no problem. Absolutely no problem. Now, uh, of that, how much will evaporate? So, like, I mean, just to, to make all these comments about clean beauty, we're going to uh, eliminate all these ethoxylated emulsifiers because they are bad. That's what this uh, environmental work, because there is no problem. There has never been a problem. They are using a non existing problem as a way to market what they want you to buy. On the other hand, it's a different story because now I have only a few slides left because right now we have uh, the regulation for the other one. And here is very limited. You can only have one part per million. And somebody said, well, this is the end of the ethoxylated, the ether sulfates that you read in every, in every shower gel and shampoo. And the question is, how much will have cost to the industry to pay for the parking? Because I told you, we knew how to keep the one for the oxygen low. We are forced to do it. Oh, I don't want to go to the industry anymore. How much will it cost? Now, at the top is the cost of the product with a high dioxin content, and the other is with a low dioxin content. This is one that is more expensive, it's more expensive, but we have known how to do this for a long time. So the industry decided not to do it because it costs money. Okay, let me park on the street. So I am blaming the industry. I was there. I mean, I'm a technical person. All I can do is this is the way you solve the problem. I don't run the company. I don't decide what to do or not to do. I could tell you stories, but I can't tell you stories of, of the, the, the people that had no view, no vision, they thought nothing's going to happen. Well, it had happened. And now look at the alternative is, for example, this is the material that is being offered as a replacement of the ether sulfates. It, it, it costs three and a half times more relative to this. So the industry is a disaster. Instead of solving the problem when, when, when we could a long time ago, they decided not to do anything. And now <laughs> look at the alternative. No, no wonder a sulfate-free shampoo is so bloody expensive because the raw materials are super expensive. It was a very bad call. So I'm blaming the industry for not responding correctly. I think now it's too late. I mean, the bad image has been created there, but that doesn't mean that I am uh, absolving the other part of the industry that is using misinformation as a way of marketing their other stuff, not an absolving the IFSC that does nothing about it other than thinking what is going to be the next uh, Congress in what part of the world so we can go over there and one week vacation. 
not in some of these chapters of the SEC that are transforming an organization that is the purpose, the progress of science into marketing events. And I'm telling you all these things because I belong to the real cosmetic industry, to this one, where we have people, and we still have people now, and we have done the past, that are trying to do the best, the mistake of the one for the oxen. <laughs> I just told you. But that doesn't mean that the rest is bad. And the savers that we have are not saving anything. They just want to buy you to buy their products. I said that. I just think you forgot. I want to repeat it. That's all there is. That's all there is. And Sephora sells fashion products. It doesn't sell cosmetic products. Well, it says cosmetic products. I said they could be shoes or cell phones. I wonder why didn't they just say cell phones instead of cosmetics? And now finally, we have the industry of P. That's my favorite. The P starts for parasites. Okay, here we go. All these are influencers from the cosmetic influencers in Italy. Who, who are these guys? Who the hell they know? And why? Uh, <laughs> We'll follow the advice from these kids. They don't know what they're talking about. Oh, there is an expert. Oh, every magazine has an expert on, on beauty. I, I get annoyed. I think in Canada, it's Toronto Star. Every time I see the crap, the person writes, they say, absolutely no idea what he's talking about. As a TV program, the beauty expert, they have no idea. They have no idea what they're talking about. No idea. And we allow that to happen. And look at that. It's just on, on YouTube. And they have an audience that listens to them. It's absolutely stupid things I said. And <laughs> this is a bloggers. Who the hell they are? And look at this is the best. Who qualifies them to know anything about cosmetics? What on earth, whatever they do is better than what I have done. Don't forget these people. And don't forget the real science, the real chemistry, the fundamentals of our industry. That's how we started as chemistry. That's how we have progress as cosmetic science. So <laughs> I say what I have to say. Okay, thank you. I'm going to move this out of here.